Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India to the NPTEL lecture series on the calculus of variations. This is the 12th uh, lecture of the series. Uh, recall that in the last lecture, we had considered uh, uh, functions of uh, several independent variables. So, there we consider this functional i of z, which is double integral over certain domain d in R 2 x y plane and here on this the surface z is defined here. So, this is z as a function of x y and here this functional was considered i of z as function of x y independent variables and z as function of x y and then z x of x y and z y of x y d x d y. So, here we had seen that uh, the necessary condition is the following equation that is f z minus del x of f z x minus del y of f z y equal to 0. So, here we had considered in the last lecture the example that i of z as double integral over d z x square plus z y square d x d y and z equal to some g x y on delta d that is uh, this is delta d the boundary of uh, domain d. So, here this case f is which is a function of x y z z x z y in this case it is z x square plus z y square and so here f z is 0 and f z x is 2 z x f z y is 2 z y and so we get minus del x of 2 z x minus del y of 2 z y equal to 0. So, this let us say this is 12.1 earlier it was something. So, let us give it 12.1 number and so here this 12.1 implies uh, the this condition and so this gives us minus 2 z x x minus 2 z y y equal to 0. So, multiplying by minus we get and dividing by 2 we get z x x plus z y y equal to 0 or this is Laplacian of 2 dimension Laplacian of this equal to 0. Where this Laplace operator in two dimension is del x x plus so u plus del y y of u. So, and so we get thus z must satisfy the Dirichlet problem
that is Laplacian of this two dimensional z equal to 0 in d and uh, z equal to g x y on the boundary of d. So, what it says that the solutions of this Dirichlet problem optimize the functional i z. The, thus, therefore, the extremals of i z are the solutions of this 12.2, the Dirichlet problem Twelve point two. Here in the next example, so if we consider here this example, let us give this name here, this example. Twelve point two. Of course, we considered this earlier also. So, example twelve point three. Here we consider i z as double integral over d of z x square plus z y square plus z some function f x y here and d x d y and z equal to g x y on delta d. So, here this 11 point sorry 12 point 1 that is f z minus del x f z x minus del y f z y equal to 0 implies that f. So, f z derivative here, here f is for this f here which is z x square plus z y square plus z f x y gives f x y because f z gives you this small f and then minus del x o of 2 z x minus del y of 2 z y equal to 0. Simplifying this we get z x x plus z y y equal to 1 by 2 f x y. Thus, hence z must satisfy the Poisson equation That namely, that two dimensional Laplacian here of z equal to 0 in d and sorry half of. So, this that is that is z x x plus z y y equal to 1 by 2 f is function of x y in d and z x y equal to g x y on delta d. 
So, this is the generalization of uh, the Dirichlet uh, problem that is the Poisson equation here, the right hand side is uh, non zero. So, it is a non homogeneous problem. Thus, therefore, the extremals of i z must these are the solutions of the Poisson equation. This is 12.4. The solutions of the Poisson equation 12.4. Now, we consider here the example which we had mentioned in first few lectures that uh, surface area of this is given by square root of 1 plus z x square plus z y square d x d y. Just recall that here we know that surface area of S is given by. So, here the situation is like this and here this domain D on this we have this surface S here and so this element area D S and this is n cap here and so this is over s this d s is sur surface element surface area element and this we have seen that this can be written as over s absolute value of n cap d s which is if we use the parameters u and v, we know that now. So, here any point p here is given. So, p has the coordinates. So, position vector of p let us say r is the position vector of p that is then x i plus y j plus z as a function of x y k here. So, the here point p has the coordinates x y and z as a function of x y like this. And so, here the parameters are x and y and therefore, this will be equal to uh, now it, it will be projected on to this. So, projection is d projection of s on x y plane that is d u uh, u v plane here is now x y plane and so the projection of the surface is d here and so we get this n absolute value of this n d s. d s is positive, so it comes out of the absolute value. Now, here we know that this n is r x cross r y and this is r x is i plus z x k cross product j plus z y k and so you can see that this comes out to be minus z x i minus z y j plus k. And so, this a of s area of s which is double integral over d now of this absolute value of n now d x d y this should be 
guess is now dx dy. And so, you get this absolute value of n as square root 1 plus z x square plus z y square and d x d y. So, that is what we had obtained earlier also. And so, in this case we have, so thus now for the functional here uh, this area of now s can be. So, here we have i of z which is integration over d square root of 1 plus z x square plus z y square d x d y. And so, here f is f of x y z x sorry z z x z y in this case is square root 1 plus z x square plus z y square. And so, this 12.1 which is that is f z minus del x, f z x minus del y, f z y equal to 0 implies that minus del by del x of uh, this thing 1 over. So, here you will have 2 will cancel. So, z x over square root 1 plus z x square plus z y square. So, you will have 1 by 2 root that and then uh, twice of z x so that 2 will cancel here minus del over del y of z y over root 1 plus z x square plus z y square equal to 0. So, we can multiply by minus or del by del x of z x over root 1 plus z x square plus z y square minus del by del y of z y over root 1 plus z x square plus z y square equal to 0. So, that is the equation we get which can be simplified like this. So, here we will have, so using that u upon v derivative formula. So, you get z x x square root 1 plus z x square plus z y square minus z x into z x z x x plus z y z x y over square root 1 plus z x square plus z y square over 1 plus z x square plus z y square. That is the first term plus z y y 1 plus z x square plus z y square minus z y into z x z x y plus z y to z y y over z y square upon 1 plus z x square plus z y square this is equal to 0. Simplifying this we get the above equation 
we get z x x to 1 plus z x square plus z y square minus z x square z x x minus z x z y z x y plus z y y to 1 plus z x square plus z y square minus z x z y z x y minus z y square z y y upon. So, that this term can be taken on the right hand side. So, we get this equal to 0 and we can see that this z x x z y square will. So, here this thing we can cancel here this z x z x square z x x will cancel with this and similarly this z y z y y will cancel with this and so we are left with z x x into 1 plus z y square minus these two terms will give us twice z x z y z x y plus z y y into 1 plus z x square. So, that is what we get finally. Z has to satisfy this necessary condition. Now, going to higher order functionals. Now, let us consider three independent variables. So, i u now u is a function of x y z. So, we have now let us say triple integral over certain volume v f of x y z. Now, these are free uh, independent variables and u is a function of x y z and then you have u x all these are functions of x y z. d x d y d z and u is to satisfy equal to sum g x y z on the boundary of this volume v. So, v is a bounded domain in three uh, dimension x y z and its boundary will be a surface delta v like that. So, here we can see that in this case we can proceed in the same manner uh, we will have phi alpha defined as over v f of x y z and then u plus alpha delta u and then u x plus alpha delta u x u y plus alpha delta u y and u z plus alpha delta u z d x d y d z and then phi prime alpha equating at alpha equal to 0 we will have this f u and then delta u plus f u x delta u x plus f u y delta u y plus f u z delta u z d x d y d z. And then shifting these derivatives here having more general uh, integration by parts formula for three dimension we will have f u minus del x of f u x minus del y of f u y minus del 
z of f u z and delta u which is function of x y z and then d x d y d z and this is equated to 0 and then having the generalized form of uh, the calculus uh, generalized form of the lemma of the calculus of variations for three dimension we see that here. So, the generalized form of the lemma of the calculus of variation extended for three dimension we get f u minus del x of f u x del y of f u y minus del z of f u z equal to so, that is what we have and so in general if you have n variables if i of u is this is n fold n times and you have f of x 1 x 2 x n and u as a function of x 1, x 2, x n and then you have del u x 1, u x 2 and so on u x n d x 1, d x 2 so on d x n. We get f u minus sigma i equal to 1 to n del x i of f u x i. So, this is we get here for the general case. So, let us put it as 12.5. Now, here in this example we consider r u as triple integral over v u x square plus u y square plus u z square d x d y d z and u equal to g x y z on the boundary of this volume v. So, this 12.5 in this case for n equal to 3 we get minus 2 u x x minus 2 u y y minus 2 u z z equal to 0 and so or this three dimensional Laplacian of u equal to 0 in d in v and u equal to g on delta v. So, that is the Dirichlet problem for three dimension. in three dimension. Now, if you have mixed kind of or higher order derivatives like this, if r u is of the form that triple integral over v f x y z or let us do it for two dimension and then can be extended. So, let us d 
and z as a function of x y. z x, z y and z x y, z sorry z x x, z x y and z y y. So, here we have higher order derivatives of the dependent variable appearing and z equal to g x y on the boundary of d. So, here how do we tackle for the higher order derivatives we have to take now here the integration by parts for higher order derivatives which we do. So, in integration by parts for mule for higher order derivatives. So, recall that we had this double integral uh, over d n x minus m y d x d y to us equal to m d x plus n d y. So, if we take if we take n equal to first if we take n equal to let us say f g and m equal to 0, we see that this f g x plus f x g that we will take on the other side equal to minus g f x d x d y and we get here plus. So, n is this f g d y. So, it is like the derivative of uh, this on g is shifted on to f and so we get minus sign here. And uh, Similarly, if we take n equal to 0 and m equal to f g, then we get y derivative f g y d x d y is minus g f y d x d y plus rather minus here, because we have this minus sign is to be shifted on to the right and so you have minus f g d x. So, we take instead of this we take minus here minus f g. So, that is what will come here. Now, if we take here n equal to f g x minus f x g and m equal to 0 we get. So, here n is this. So, here we will have double derivatives coming. So, f uh, f g x x and then f x g x. So, that again will cancel with f x g x here. So, we will have only terms like this f g x x d x d y and we will have here and in this we will, we will have now f x x g and with minus sign which will come on the right with plus sign. So, we will have this g f x x over d d x d y and then here n we have taken like this. So, n d y plus so this 
f g x minus f x g here d y. So, this is a second order uh, integration by parts formula where this x x derivative shifted on to f here and similarly if we take n equal to 0 and m equal to f g y minus f y g we get f g y y d x d y this g f y y and then minus over this f g y minus f y g d x. Also, if we take uh, now uh, here since n involves x derivative. So, if we take here y derivatives type of this, then we will have mixed kind of a thing. So, that is what we will take. So, m equal to let us say half of rather n half of now here we need to take y once f g y minus f y g and m equal minus half of f g x minus f x g. So, we get now over d. So, n x will give you uh, f g x y and uh, the terms f x g y and here f y g x and they will also come from here they will cancel. So, we will have and half of this plus half of this will make it 1 here. So, f g x y d x d y will give you over d g f of x y d x d y and then plus half of f g y minus f y g d y minus half f g x minus f x g. All these boundary integrals are over c. So, these are the higher order integration by parts formally for this. So, these can be used here in this where you have mixed kind of derivatives x y and this x x and y y derivatives will be shifted. So, here now we consider same way phi alpha like this. So, that is double integral over d and so f of x y and z plus alpha delta z and then z x plus alpha delta z x and then z y plus alpha delta z y and then higher order derivatives z x x plus alpha delta z x x this is alpha delta z x plus alpha delta z x x and z x y plus alpha delta z x y and z y y plus alpha delta d x d y. So, this phi prime alpha at alpha equal to 0 will give us this f z delta z plus f z x delta z x plus f y delta z y plus f 
z x x delta z x x plus f z y z x y delta z x y plus f z y y delta z y y d x d y. Now, these first order derivatives uh, will be shifted in the same manner as we have done earlier and these x x derivative x y derivative and y y derivative of z will be shifted uh, on to f and will give us this. So, here this phi prime alpha alpha equal to 0 equal to 0 will imply we skip those steps here just using those integration by parts formula will give us f z del x of z x f z x minus del of del y of f z y and plus del 2 x x f z x x plus del 2 of x y f z x y plus del 2 of y y of f z y y equal to 0. So, that is the equation we will get in this case. So, we take an example here. So, this is 12.6 and 12.7. So, here i z is z x x square plus z y y square plus 2 z x y square d x d y and z equal to g x y on delta t. And so, here this 12.6, so 12.6 implies that del 4 of z del x 4 plus 2 del 4 of del x square del y square of z plus del 4 of del y square of z equal to z, which is known as biharmonic. And here z equal to g, this is to be satisfied in d and z equal to g on d. So, the extremals of i are the solutions of That's, so this is 12.8 the biharmonic equation twelve point eight. So now we consider uh, isoparametric problems. which uh, were discussed in the first few lectures. So, here we have the following picture in x y plane there is certain curve c is given a fixed length it, and it is enclosing the area d here. So, we know that this area of d 
is this double integral d x d y subject to the condition. So, we have to optimize this or maximize rather. So, maximize this such that this length which is d s s is the small s is the arc length is fixed. So, a given is fixed. So, l is fixed here. So, that is what we have to do here. So, area this is to be maximized subject to the condition that this length l is a given fixed number. So, just recall that uh, here we have this double integral over d this n x minus m y d x d y equal to this m d x plus n d y as the Green's theorem and if you take n equal to x and m equal to minus y we get twice double integral d d x d y equal to. So, here x d y minus y d x like this. So, area of d is d x d y and so this is half of this x d y minus y d x and this arc length s. Uh, so, here this l is and integral over c d s which is square root d x square plus d y square. So, using this if we parameterize c as x equal to x t y equal to y t and t lying between t 1 to t 2 then we get this area of d as integral over c half of x which is function of t then d y by d t minus y t d x by d t into d t. So, in short we will write it like this x y dot minus y x dot d t here x dot is d by d t of x and y dot is d by d t of y and this l is then will be integral over c x dot square plus y dot square into d. So, we use uh, the Lagrange's method of we use Lagrange's method of undetermined of undetermined parameter parameters. So, we consider i of x. So, t x y x dot y dot and of course, the lambda is also there. So, that is t 1 to t 2 half of x y dot minus y x dot plus lambda square root x dot square plus y dot square 
and then d t. So, here f is t is the independent variable x and y are functions of t and x dot y dot and lambda is also there. So, half of x y dot minus y x dot plus lambda square root x dot square plus y dot square. And so, here we get these equations f x minus d by d t of f of x dot equal to 0 and f y minus d by d t of f y dot equal to 0, because there are two dependent variables x and y. So, these two equations give us half y dot minus d by d t of minus half y plus lambda y dot over square root x dot square plus y dot square equal to 0. Similarly, we get minus half x dot minus d by d t of half x plus lambda x dot over x dot square plus y dot square equal to 0. So, here we get simplifying this, we get y dot is lambda d by d t of x dot upon square root x dot square plus y dot square equal to 0 and x dot plus lambda d by d t of y dot upon x dot square plus y dot square equal to 0. These can be integrated to get y minus lambda x dot over x dot square plus y dot square equal to c 1 and x plus lambda y dot upon square root x dot square plus y dot square equal to c 2. So, we do not need to integrate it, we can see that uh, y minus c 1 square and x minus c 2 square will give us lambda square. So, we see that we get a circle. So, here obviously, as expected that in this case circle is the one which optimizes this area uh, when the length of the circle is fixed here. And uh, next to one we will be considering the uh, geodesics here and uh, in this case we will have. So, what is the geodesics case just recall that we have certain domain d here and let us say this is the surface here. On this surface we have two points a and b and so here this we need to find uh, the minimum distance between uh, these points a and b such that uh, these points are moving, uh, these points are there on the surface S. So, such curves are called, uh, minimum length on surfaces are called uh, geodesics. So, that we will consider in the next lecture. Thank you very much.